Hey guys, what is going on? Skyrocket Gaming here. Today I'm going to do something a bit different. Um, I'm going to show you how to create a simple YouTube thumbnail, actually. So, it's basically for just kind of... Thumbnails are important. They can drag attention to your videos on the screen. They kind of drag people's eyes to it, in a way. It makes them actually want to click on it. If you don't have a good thumbnail, they're just going to kind of pass it over. It's not going to really mean much. So, you can do this any copy Photoshop GIMP. It's pretty simple to do. Any basic photo editing program will get the job done. Me, I'm using Photoshop CC. You can probably do the exact same in GIMP. Um, Photoshop Elements is a free version of it. Usually any version will do. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off and we're just going to open your thumbnail picture that you want to use. So I actually have one saved right here. I have a nice green background. So. When we open up this background, it's it's just kind of a plain flat background, but it's kind of it kind of pops, it kind of drags your attention to it, and obviously you're going to want to put words on that background that pertain to what your video is. So, if I was making a Arma three, for example, and I wanted to make make basically if I wanted to say Arma three exile, I would make a text box here with the te the text tool on the side and GIMP. It's going to be the same general concept. It'd same drag and drop thing with uh, the text box and you just want to type whatever you want. So for example, Arma 3. And then maybe you want to create a second layer here. So you just, I don't think you really have to split it up. Layers are very important when making these so you can easily manage all of your projects and all of the stuff that's going on on the picture at one time. So you want to take Arma 3 and maybe you're going to want to take this, move it around, kind of adjust it and place it by just selecting different tools so now that's in place. And now uh, you're gonna take the text tool again. I like the wrong thing. And then you wanna take the text tool and you wanna make another box right here. And they like your kind of your subtitle. So I could do exile island wars, or let's just do, I think that will fit. Island wars, exile island wars. All right, so yes, you could probably use this as your subtitle. You could use this as your kind of your uh, thumbnail right now. Yes, it's simple, but it doesn't really pop it. You, it kind of just looks like a simple thing. Another thing you could do, for example, instead of using a green background and just a white text is put an outline around your text that really makes it pop and it really makes it stand out to the viewer. So what you wanna do is you wanna go into the bottom right hand corner where it says FX and you're gonna wanna highlight either one of your layers. And for example, I'm gonna start with the arm of three you want to press FX, and you want to go to stroke. This basically allows you to control the stroke size of the text you just highlighted. So it kind of goes into that font you see online a lot. With It's a impact bold with a black outline. And you can change the size of the outline to whatever you want to be. I usually go with around, I'd say nine uh, pixels for the outline there and always make it rounded. It looks really good. Your color is black, so you want that to be able to contrast on everything. So it's super easy to read and put the position on the outside. If you put it on the inside, it it uh, extends itself inwards and it looks kind of strange, I guess. Opacity, 100% all the time. Makes it easily visible. Field type, always black. So like I said, so it can be just contrasting. There's that. You apply it, you do the exact same thing. Click on your subtitle, effects, stroke, and it should have it saved for you with nine, nine uh, pixels. You just want to apply that. So there, now you have some good font, fonts or words that stand out on the background, it looks good. But you can add other things to it and you can also have backgrounds that pertain to the game, for example. So if I were to just open a different folder here, folder right here. So here's a screenshot, this is from a game right here. So if I were to take this screenshot, um, I could take this and add those same lettering I did before, and but and so it pertains to the game. I've already done that before. I actually already made a thumbnail like this, right there, right here. I did the same thing. Arma Three Exile Car Chase. It's black outline, white font. It contrasts on everything. Super easy to see, easily visible, and it pertains to the game. This is something that you want to click on. Your eyes are dragged to that font. Also, you could add maybe different pictures to it. You could add your logo. You could add, maybe if you're playing Minecraft, you get a picture of a creeper or something like that. And that's when you could um, take in 
like reefer. So you want to go, you could go to your Google images, whatever, say I want to take this. This is an alpha background Minecraft creeper. It's super easy to do. It's an alpha background, so it's a vector. It's not a vector, actually. It's You can easily drag and drop that. So if I want to view that image and I can save it to my folder that I'm dealing with right now, FF, I can save that image right there. So it's saved to that folder. Now, what I can do is, I'm just going to use this for example. I can drag this to the side here. And I can open up this folder and I can find that image of the creeper that I just saved and I can drag this on. There we go. So now I have a separate image on my thumbnail here. I can drag this image around. I can resize it however I want. I can put it wherever and the background will mesh because it is an alpha and an alpha means that it is a shape that is a dynamic shape where its background is not white but the background is whatever is showing behind it so you can easily overlay it on things you can place this here maybe and then i have my logo here um yes so you can place that wherever you want make a very dynamic sort of background also you can um add custom colorization or filters to your background photo. So for example, here, let's go to our back project. We have Arma 3 Exile Island Wars. So for just for the time being, what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to hide both these. They're, they're, I didn't delete them, they're just being hidden. I can go to my background here. This is currently locked because there's a background, so I'm going to go Command J, and I'm going to create a copy of that background so I can edit it without having to edit my original copy. So. Once I have my original copy, same thing. You want to go FX and you want to go for whatever you really want to do, color overlay. And you want to do your blend mode as maybe just a normal. You want to just hit OK. Now, this is your color overlay. So you have, right now, I have a gray color overlay. And what you can do is you can change the opacity of that color overlay to be something else. So, Let's just create another color overlay on this and to lower the opacity. Now, I've kind of made that grayish in a way. It's it's a gray, it kind of dims it out. Now, what I could do is I could change the color of the color overlay by pressing I, I think. There we go, color picker overlay. You want to click right next to normal and you can change the color to whatever you want can change the kind of how it looks. If you want it to look more of a blue, you can just select a color blue filter overlay and like that. And now it has, I didn't apply it, one second. There, and change the opacity down. Press okay on that. Change the opacity right there so it's not completely co covering it. And move this around in here so it's more of a, ooh, that looks really good. And you press okay and then okay. So now it's more of a, kind of a washed out this versus that it looks a lot different it's more soft looking and so after i have this and i want to put my text back on and make it more visible again and maybe i want to add that creeper that uh, it's not there anymore but basically if that is your concept you can add this on anything you want and you can save this and usually when working in photoshop what you want to do is you want to export your projects I'm gonna go export as, because if you save as, it's gonna save it as a .psd and that is a Photoshop file that you can only edit in Photoshop and it's not an actual image. Actually, I first, this, I recommend resizing your image. So you wanna to go to image, you wanna to go to image size and you wanna change it to the height, put it as 720. Because it works better sometimes. YouTube is a bit weird when it comes to adding things onto its um, thumbnails. Is that if it's 1080p, sometimes it'll be too big. I've had experiences where 1080 was too big, and I had to say this to 720. It doesn't really matter. So let's change that just to be sure. Change it to 720. There is no really quality degradation when it comes to uploading that to the website. So now you have your thumbnail, and you just want to export that to whatever folder you want right here. You can go like export as. Now you have your export and you have your image size, you have your width and your height and your scale. Uh, keep as a PNG, JPEG, whatever you kind of want to do and just press export and you choose wherever you want. So I go to my desktop, that folder and I just save it there. Now I have it in the folder right here, easily accessible as a regular image that I can upload as a thumbnail. And that is about it. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe for more. I should be uploading more tutorials in the future and maybe some gameplay. And sure, be sure to check me out on Twitch and I will see you guys next time.